Hey everyone, welcome back to the Sacred Fain podcast. I'm Kasha Rashval and I'm ready to say things again. Now, this may not be the most eloquent episode because, well, let's just be honest. This is the thing that I've been struggling with the most recently, you know, for the latter sort of or the former part of of this year, I, latter former, I don't know what what is <laughs> see this is what I mean. Since about February, it's been a little bit crunchy and a little bit sandpapery in terms of um, voice and expression and the relationship that I have with my work and what I'm here to do and who I am here to be. And I don't know about you, uh, if you've noticed that it's been a little bit crunchy for you, but the clients I've worked with, my colleagues, my friends, even family, all have bumped up against that question of like, what's happening? Why am I here? Why do things seem to be either slowing down or burning down? Or it feels like there's a break on, even though I feel like I'm doing all the right things, there seems to be a break on. Have you noticed that? I certainly did. And that's why, you know, the, the last few podcasts, I did some um energy forecasting and looked at the numbers and looked at, you know, significant dates and all of that. And that's all well and good. And I love doing that. Um, but at a certain point, it just felt like, you know, here's another energy forecast. Here's another energy update. There's like, there are a dime a dozen on the internet. And I thought, what does it matter if I do one or if I don't, who actually cares? And um, got to this place where in order to feel, to in order to connect with the voice of who Kasha is and what she is here to say, I needed to not say anything for a long time. And so I didn't, and it was really uncomfortable. I can tell you it was really uncomfortable because especially being an entrepreneur, right. And, and having a business to take care of and all of, all of those sort of things, it gets really uncomfortable when you feel like you have nothing to say, or you don't want to say the things that you're thinking Um, And and you need to process some stuff, right? What's going to happen? Will the world keep on turning? What will happen to my work? What will happen to my business? And these are all big questions and I don't have all the answers, but that's why I had to go silent is so I could do some of this deeper work, some, uh, some of this deeper reflection and really just get to the core of, okay, I feel like I know myself pretty well. And yet I still have so many blind spots. And so where am I at, right? And to really meet myself in a place of um, where I'm at right now. And yes, I am very blessed to be able to do that, right? To to have the the family structure, the financial structure to be able to do that. And so I am very grateful um, and grateful to everyone who has supported me in in all the ways, um, especially emotionally, mentally, as I go through this. Because my passion, my drive, my big vision is still this idea of sacred fame, this idea of really being seen for who you authentically are, being known for that, being being able to make your living off of that, if that is your choice, and doing that to the degree that you want. So you don't have to be famous like a celebrity You don't have to be an influencer. You might simply want impact in your community. You might want international impact, but it's, do you trust that the impact that you are making is enough, right? Is it filling you up or is it depleting you? The impact that you are making, is it Um, coming from a place of your most vital and vibrant and excellent energy, or are you burning out while you're trying to make that impact, right? Those are the big questions. Those are the the big um, pieces of my mission that I am here for. And so I have to walk my talk, right? I can't be fulfilling my own mission and fulfilling my own vision while I myself am burning out. And that's what started happening even though I've been um, supporting my health, especially my health, the last few years and being more cognizant of it, um, I wasn't doing that 100%. And that was what was required of me this year. And that's why in February, um, I felt like my voice started faltering. 
and the communication about my work started faltering and it wasn't authentic anymore and things had to burn and I had to surrender and I had to stop fighting. And this has been an ongoing conversation between me and the universe. And I feel like now I'm, I've, I've worked through that enough. I am through a lot of the messy stuff and looking back at the messy stuff, it's easier for me to talk about it, right? When I look at my own energetics, my own charts, uh, my own numerology, um, even like some of the human design, the little bit of human design that I understand. Um, I'm not someone who easily talks about the mess while I'm in the mess. I need to come to a place of clarity, look around, and be able to speak about it from a place of um, a, at least some integration. And so being ready to say things again, I decided no matter how this podcast episode turns out, it might not be eloquent at all. It might be rambly and all over the place. Um, but that's life, isn't it? Right? We, if, if I get caught up, and if we get caught up in trying to be perfect, first of all, that doesn't relate to anybody, because none of us are perfect. And second of all, um, I am so good at editing myself before I even begin. So to do to, to give a speech or to talk or to say things, even on, on my own podcast, where it, it's not polished is really uncomfortable. And that is part of the reason why I need to say stuff and have this again, regularly, so that I can move through this and realize that, yes, the world keeps on turning. Yes, not everybody's going to agree with me. Some people might hate it. Some people might love it. It really doesn't matter. It's part of my mission to use my voice. And that's exactly what I'm doing. So again, my, my biggest desire is sacred fame is something that um, my people want. They want to be known, seen, and paid for being themselves. And that, it, that authentic self-expression is unique to each and every one of them, each and every one of you. And you may not want to be famous, but you probably want to be authentically self-expressed, right? You want to know that what you say comes from that place within you where there is no doubt. It comes from that place within you of um, intuitive or soul connection, right? Where you are whole and you know that what you do say, what you do express is enough. And if you are faltering there, or if you are questioning that, then that's where the work is, right? And doing the work means not just, um, you know, journaling or a gratitude practice. It's not just going through the motions. It has to be a full body experience, not just mental, not just emotional, not just physical. It has to be a full system experience, including the body, especially including the body. Our body is the most powerful instrument of intuition that we own. There is no... Uh, no other instrument that, that we could possibly have is more powerful than our body. If you didn't have this body, right? If I didn't have this body, I would simply be information floating around in the universe. And yes, that's still very valuable. However, I wouldn't be able to do this work that I'm doing here. However, crunchy and bumbly and, and rambly sometimes it feels without your body, without being limited in this beautiful human container and all of its faults, right? You would simply be information floating around in the universe. And so authentic self-expression includes our physical body. It includes knowing how to listen to it, knowing what your intuition sounds like and feels like and shows up as in your body. And so we're going to explore some of these topics moving forward on this, on this podcast. When you feel like you don't hear your intuition or you don't know what it is that you want to say, um, rather than pushing and shoving, I've noticed it's best or it's it's more useful, more peaceful, I guess, to just shut up and not say anything for a while and really get to know yourself and who you're being rather than, than diving into a whole bunch of doing, hoping that if you do enough things, right, you'll catch up and the momentum will find you and you'll be on track and perhaps in my experience, that hasn't worked for me, right? So it's always coming back to a place of being. And this time around, this year, that being included not communicating, not speaking, not um, not saying things out there. 
obviously I did speak and, you know, communicate with friends and family and all of that, but I'm, I'm talking about like this platform of work, this platform of entrepreneurship, of service. Sometimes um, we just have nothing to say and that's okay. Because when you honor that, and, and I learned to honor that, you discover um, other parts of you that have something to say that perhaps need healing or perhaps need to be witnessed or heard. You know, some parts that are very powerful but, and helpful and ready, other parts that perhaps hold trauma or some sort of um, interference of stress or drama from the past and they need to be seen and they need to be heard and they need to be witnessed. And I'm going to dip into numerology for a minute here. July or sorry, June was a four energy month, right? So we went from March, which was three, which was all about expression. And um, if you found yourself not being able to like say the things you wanted to say in the way you wanted to say them, they didn't land with you. They didn't feel authentic to you. That would have shown up for you in March or sorry, God, March, sorry, May, <laughs> May, 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 May was a three energy month. Then June was a four energy month. And so wherever you noticed that your self-expression was breaking down, and, and let me tell you, I noticed, <laughs> I noticed where I wasn't being authentic to my own voice, right? Um, June being a four energy month would have been the time to look at your foundations, look at your basics, right? Who are you? How do you respond to the frequencies around you? Do you edit yourself? I discovered that I edit myself before I even begin most of the time. My mind just gets on this diatribe of like, well, that's not going to sound good or that's not good enough or nobody cares. Nobody wants to hear you say anything, right? That that inner critic was so loud and we needed to have conversation. We needed to have integration. And so June was all about foundations. Now in July this month, we are all about change. We are in a five energy month and five wants to do things its own way, marches to the beat of its own drum and it wants change and it wants freedom. So when you, you know, as you move through this month, as, you, as we move through the, this month of, of change energy, First of all, how comfortable are you with change, right? And I can tell you sometimes I am not, I resist, I, you know, have a tantrum about it. Um, life is change. We know that. So how can we um, pivot or adjust our relationship to change? Can we embrace it? Can we trust that the changes that are happening are happening for us? And at some level, right, at some level of soul agreement, we orchestrated this being here at this time, facing what we are facing in our personal lives, uh, in the world at large, right? We are here to create change. And so um, how you respond to change is question number one. And how, what you want instead, right? What changes you want to create is, is another question that can sometimes be really scary because do you allow yourself to have what you want, right? Do you allow yourself to receive what it is you want? In order to do that, you first got to know what you want or what you desire, right? What What is it that, that you desire instead? And so um, this is a month about that. And finding your own authentic voice amidst the noise that is out there requires diligence. It requires, you know, deep listening with your whole body, with your emotions, with your physical self. It requires that. And it requires being willing to meet yourself where you're at instead of then criticizing or editing yourself or judging yourself um, harshly. Often we judge ourselves so much more harshly than anyone could ever judge us, right? And we think, well, if nobody cares what I have to say or if, if I'm going to do it wrong or you know, if I, nothing I ever do is enough, why even bother? Why even start? And that's, that's a really tough place to be. I have been there. It sucks. Now, the other cool thing that happened, and, and this came as a result of my own sort of battle with my health, is I started studying medical intuition with a teacher and I adore her. And she, she like teaches exactly the way that I like to learn. And this was one of those 
full body. Yes, that's my next step. I need that. I want that. I'm studying that. And I dove into medical intuition mostly for my own purposes because I wanted to support my own health. I wanted to um, know how I could um, support my own body to return to vibrant and excellent health in a more holistic way. I'm also working with, you know, a doctor and all of that stuff too, but, but I am, I wanted to do that for myself as well. And so of course me being who I am and, and working with the guidance that I have, it, medical intuition isn't something that I'm going to keep to myself. And I've been doing practice sessions. I open that up to my community and I've been doing short practicum sessions where I practice the skills I am learning in medical intuition and the feedback that I've been getting, even though it, to me, it sometimes feels often, it feels like I'm bumbling along and I'm, you know, can't find the words or I can't express eloquently what it is that I'm seeing and how it's showing up, or I, I don't know my physiology of a certain body part well enough. And, and so what to me feels like bumbling along is actually being received so beautifully by the, the, um, people that I'm practicing with. And I'm, I'm receiving feedback that is so affirming that even though I feel like I'm stumbling and bumbling along, it's actually creating change for, for them. It's creating change for them. And it's because even though I was terrified, I had the courage to, to say, I'm going to do this and I want feedback. I'm going to ask for, for feedback so that I can improve. And it is, it's been really beautiful because even though like my own ego and my own inner critic doesn't think I'm doing it right, everyone has so far said that the way I'm doing it is exactly the way they needed to hear it. It is exactly the way that they, um, that, that resonated with their body. It resonated so deeply. Some of them are brought to tears. Others feel the shift instantly. Others want to sit with it and come back to it and have a follow-up session. And I love that because because that's what happens when you when you go silent for a while and you start to listen to your own authentic self-expression right? and begin to practice saying things in a new way. And so even though it's crunchy, even though it is still terrifying, it is still um, not comfortable for me to not only offer something completely new. I mean, it's not that new. It, it, it does fit in with the energy healing work, the, the specialized kinesiology, like the Akashic, it, it all meshes together. It's all, it, it is the next perfect next evolution of how I serve. Um, but it, it feels new enough that it's scary, right? And so the questions that I continue to, to bump up against, and I want to share these with you because I, I bet you, you will also bump up against them in this month, especially in July, in this five month is, you know, first of all, your fear, right? As you are expressing who you are out there, right? In your life, whether with family, with friends, with, with your colleagues or in your work, um, do you notice that you want to edit yourself before you even begin? Do you have expectations that, um, it needs to turn out a certain way, right? Are you expecting a certain outcome or a certain result? And then when it doesn't, you turn on yourself and you're like, well, I, there you go. I knew it, I was doing it wrong. <laughs> so these questions of like, do I edit myself before I even begin? Or do I give myself permission to say the things even if it's imperfect, right? Do I have expectations of myself? Are they fair expectations? And then these questions are like, am I doing it right? Am I doing enough, right? How do I know that if that what I am doing is creating enough change? And then how do I measure that enoughness? And is it even up to me <laughs> to measure that I am creating enough change? That's a really interesting question. And I would love to know how you would answer that. Am I creating enough change, right? Are you creating enough change? And how would you know? How would you know either way that you're not or that you are? Because, you know, when we think of something like the butterfly effect, where a tiny, tiny little um, 
shift creates like a, they say, you know, the, the flap of a butterfly wing in one part of the world creates typhoons across the, you know, another part of the, the globe. It's science. <laughs> so if you decide to either go silent and find your authentic voice or to do and be more of yourself in your body to connect to, to your intuition, to le listen more deeply to yourself, to your body, to what you need, then we, we really don't know what effect that's going to have out there. Not just because you say the right thing or you do the right thing, but because your energetics change and all of a sudden you are anchoring a different version of you, a more authentic, high vibe version of you. And that, I, I don't know that that's measurable. So moving forward in July, um, I don't have the specifics. I don't have the specific dates. I didn't pull that up. That wasn't my intention for this episode. Um, we know that full moon is all about letting go. New moon is bringing in. But it's like it bef without even knowing all the details and knowing that this is a month of change, what is it that in immediately that pop of your intuition, what is the one thing, the one area that you want to create change in? And do you give yourself permission to know what is coming in to replace, right? What you desire to bring in instead? Do you know what that is? Are you willing to know? Are you wanting to know? Are you able to know, right? Are you ready to know? That's the question of July. And so I'm so grateful to all of you who have stuck with me, even through the silence, even through the crunchiness. And I'm so grateful to all new faces, new ears, new eyes who are joining me on this journey of authentic self-expression. It's not always a clean journey. It has, you know, it, it's, it's an epic adventure, isn't it? <laughs> Adventures are messy and require a lot of trust and also require a lot of helping hands. And so, um, my goal is to keep this podcast regular again, as much as I honor my voice and I'm ready to say things again. And, you know, probably not all of it will resonate with everyone. And that is okay because it's not meant to. I'm, I know that part of my reason for, for being here is to ruffle some feathers, to stir some pots <laughs> and to bring, you know, philosophy to life that, um, that expresses me. So I will do my best to, um, to do that again, if I need to go silent, well, then that will also happen. But I, I think I'm ready to say things again. So welcome back. I'm so grateful to be here with you and let me know the answer to that question of, um, how do you know if you are doing enough and how would you measure that? Is it even measurable? And is it up to you to measure? That's more than one question, but have an amazing rest of your day and I will see you all next time.